I completely forgot to talk about you last time. Hey buddy, welcome back to more Legion of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2. I'm Sir Matson. last time we started off our free day, our second free day, getting the Ozki Adventure hidden quest done with, where we just went around, searched for beans. It was pretty great. This time we'll be continuing our off day, uh, continuing to talk to different people and doing our bonding events. But first things first, as I said there, I want to talk about Sharon a little bit. Sharon is one of the best party members in the entire game. She is absolutely amazing. Uh, think of what Fee can do and ramp that up to 12. Sharon is so good at combat. She is absolutely incredible. She has a good variety of things that she can do. Um, and again, she's just incredible. She starts off with a Juggler, which is already a fantastic Master Quartz. And is a 30% chance to inflict an abnormality on any attack, as well as another 30% chance to inflict a nightmare. Uh, that, it doesn't sound like much, but that is out of every abnormality in the game. So, give that to, say, a similar sort of setup as what I have on Elisa, usually, where I give her a lot of statuses. This is good on, like, Gaius, eventually, who will have a lot of different lines, because, of course, Sharon does kind of not have the benefit of only having two lines, Gaius has four. Uh, Gaius actually does tremendously well with it, uh, Fee also does quite well with it, though not as good as Gaius because, uh, you have that free poison usually you would have in here with a Earth one. Juggler is so good, um, and it's, it's a pretty well-rounded Master Course too. It doesn't give you the most in terms of your very visible stats, it doesn't give too much HP or EP, but just its effects are fantastic. Juggler is super good. And then as for Sharon's abilities in general, her S-Craft is Death's Embrace. 100% chance of KO. Yeah. She will basically insta-kill anything that's not a boss monster. That's already fantastic. But that's just the S-Craft, because she also has three other very good arts. Binding Chains has a double attack on it. Generally speaking, the double attack isn't fantastic. Uh, it doesn't really offer too much ad addition, uh, but it can crit twice, and it can get around reflects very well. Binding Chains also has a chance of seal, it also delays, uh, it sucks enemies in closer, which is good for getting people in closer for, say, a Golden Sphere, uh, for a good area of effect. Binding Chains is fantastic. Shadow Stitch, prevents moving, it also really slows enemies down, and it hits even harder. It's a large area too, both these are large areas. And then tea time, plus 50 CP is really good, and it also heals 50% HP, cures all ailments. It's so good, Sharon is an amazing party member. She is one of the best in the game. The reason that I say usually like Fee is someone better, one, there is, you have experience from them in Cold Steel 1. And two, eventually adult characters will leave the party for a while. There is a good chunk of the game where you will not have people who are outside of class 7, um, so you are a little bit limited in when you can use Sharon, but when you can use her, she is tremendous. She is one of the best party members I've ever played as in any game, let alone this game. Sharon is so good. Moving along, we are going to start off our bonding events, if we're going to talk to people. Hey, guess what? We're going to do a test run with the cable car today. And that goes well, so we'll be able to resume normal operations tomorrow. And this is more tail waking up, because there's been nothing but good news lately. I'm not complaining one bit. After all the stuff that went down a few weeks ago, I'm, fine. I'm glad things are finally back to normal. I couldn't agree more. I'm not really getting the cable car running again. Thanks. I appreciate it. As before, we do have two uh, bonding events that will give us character notes. However, we do have three available. So there is one that you can use at your leisure and still get 100% completion. The first person that we are going to talk to, I kind of alluded to it by heading over here in the first place, is Toval. Sharon was kind enough to give us the, uh, give us the official Ouroboros seal of approval on your defenses yesterday. They might be number one on the guilt list of enemies, but everything I've seen out of her is worthy of our trust. Still, the more time passes, the grammar of the situation here in the Empire gets. Maybe it's time for me to square things well with the gods, just in case. A little cracking on me right now. Maybe we should go join him. Indeed, we will. I don't have to pray, I'd be happy to join you. That's the plan. Nice to have some company. Something I wanted to talk to you about anyway, so I guess the goddess is smiling, me, smiling on me already. What would that be? I'm kind of surprised.
just wanted to come and pray all of a sudden. Never really struck me as much of a religious man. <laughs> well, it's because I'm not really. I only really come to church to pray before the big jobs. What brought you here today, then? You need you need to ask? I want to pray for your kid's future, as well as the future of all of us in the Bracers Guild. Both to Adios and my other goddess. Whoa, 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 who's this other goddess? <laughs> kind of an embarrassing question to answer, to tell you the truth. But she's the woman who set me on the road to becoming a Bracer. It all started back in the day when I was still working for old Mict. I ended up getting caught up in some trouble involving an artifact, you see, and she's the one who helped me get through it all. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of trouble? Let's just say that's one experience I'll never be happy to relive. I was pretty skilled with arts even back then, but if she hadn't come when she did, I'd have been a goner. She's a tad on the violent side, though. The kind of person who could take out a whole Jaeger Corps with her bare hands. I think a tad might be putting it lightly. Still, that was how we met, and she saw the potential I had when it came to arts. Thanks to her, I ended up finding my true calling. I threw away all the other aliases I'd been using up until that point. It became Toval around to New York. Grace, that's how I'm gonna stay. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is, people at the end of the day are the sum of their experiences. There is obviously a lot you don't know about your past, but that's not what defines who you are. What does define you are the choices you make, the paths you choose. That's what I think, at least. Totally. Well, anyway, you still got more of your classmates to find. And even then, you still got plenty of time to find exactly what it is you want to do with your life. But if you ever need any advice, you can always come talk to me. Thanks, Toval. I still have no idea what I want to do after all of us meet up or after this war is over. But hopefully by the end of it, I have a better idea. There we go. Conversation finished, Reen and Toval offered up silent prayers to the goddess and swore once again to survive the trials of war and come out on the other side. Bond with Toval has strengthened. So we get a little bit more, and as for who the other goddess is, that would be Ein Selnit from Trails in the Sky. Again, I've mentioned this before, there is another reference that he has to Trails in the Sky with his... Uh, it was a talking, uh, talking robot, uh, talking archaism, that's the word they use. Um, I will eventually play Trails to the Sky on the channel, probably before I get into Reverie. Uh, Reverie being essentially Cold Steel 5, um, it pretty much is, I think it wraps up the arc of both the Liberal arc with Earth, it wraps up the uh, Trails in the Sky arc as well as this one. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if it actually wraps it up, but it's not out in America yet. So, yeah. The second person we want to talk to is Sharon. How are you doing the cooking, Sharon? I thought it might be the best way to make myself useful. Lady Schwarz and I have been plotting out all sorts of culinary concepts that could aid with your father's recovery. Looks shockingly comfortable in our kitchen. I've not given it much thought before, but seeing an Ouroboros and Forza staying in my house is kind of weird. Is something the matter, Master Me? Can I make you a favorite dish or something of the sort? Lady Elise is out shopping for ingredients at the moment. It's not too late to put in any special requests. I would gladly leave deciding the dinner menu to the two of you. You would be just like a married couple. Whatever you want to make will be just fine. I don't know why I'm wasting my time worrying about her past. She's still our share, no matter who she works for. I've got in my mind, though. Maybe I should take some time to ask her a little bit about Ouroboros. Well, it's kind of out of the blue, but what do you mind telling me about Ouroboros? If you can, anyway. I feel like I should learn as much as that about them as possible, since we're always definitely going to face off again. Goodness. Would you be willing to accompany me onto the mountain path again? Huh? I'm not even sure, but why? You'll have to see when we get there. Though if you need some time to get ready, I can wait. We ain't got time to wait, Sharon. We going out there. Right now. Oh, a dead end. What exactly did you bring me here for, Sharon? Is there something here that I'm not seeing? This should be far enough from the village. You wouldn't want to cause any trouble for anyone, hmm? What are you doing? Please draw your blade, Master Reen. Allow me to take this opportunity to give you a little due practice. But practice? Where did this come from? I'm sure you don't need me to inform you of this, but Ouroboros has chosen to support the Noble Alliance in their endeavors. 
Their agents assisting them are incredibly powerful and skilled, much like the Phantom Thief. While well, that powerful, should you choose to define the way you and your classmates fight is good, then the society of Ouroboros is nothing short of evil. Trying to fight such e trying to fight evil such as that head on is pure folly, but I too am part of the society. Perhaps by fighting me, you can discover something that will help you stand up to them. And I think they'll be far more useful to you than simply learning information about the group that may serve no purpose. I see. Alright then. I accept your challenge. No holding back, Mastery. And you see what you're truly capable of. Your impromptu training session then quickly began. Sheriff showed no mercy, subjecting me to the full life of many skills. And he struggled valiantly to find an opening to mount a counter attack, barely enduring her onslaught. This is an accurate result, by the way. Again, Sharon's incredible. That was wonderful. It takes some impressive skills to catch one of my steel wires in such a short period of time. I was only able to catch one, though. This has been a real combat stage when you were fighting to kill. I would have been torn to shreds long before that. Oh, that may well be true. Still, you determinedly tried to find ways to, over to turn overwhelming odds in your favor, never once giving up. Seeing that was enough to make me believe this practice session was not in vain. Do you mind if I ask you a question, Sharon? Why do you do so much to help us when you're supposedly still with Ouroboros? It seems strange to be trained on how to fight against the members by someone who's part of the group. The enforcers of Ouroboros are granted a certain degree of freedom in what we do. I simply exercise that freedom to choose, ser to choose serving yourselves and the Reinfer family over Ouroboros. Though the fact that I'm a member of the society does not change, of course. It includes up approximately nothing for me. At the very least, I can assure you that you have nothing to worry about. Until this war reaches a conclusion, I'll fight alongside you and your classmates. That, I promise, my love and devotion are with not only Lady Elisa, but with each and every one of you. I swear to the goddess, I will protect and fight for you with all that I am. Thank you. We'll be counting on you, Sharon. Always. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier. Sharon scarifies me. The conversation over, Sharon gave Reen first aid for the injuries she had sustained during the, t during the battle. Together, they happily returned to Mir. Again, Sharon, one of the best units in the entire game. In the entire series, in the entirety of any game I've ever played. <laughs> she's a Again, I am not exaggerating when she said when I said that she's absolutely incredible. Um, and of course that means that once we get to the gram, she's going to miss everything, because that's exactly what happened with Fee. Talk to Elliot, because he's here. I'm so glad your dad's finally woken up. I think you might invite him to the hot springs for a tonight for a little father-son bonding? Maybe not just yet. You should probably stay in bed until he gets a bit more of a strength back. Okay, yeah, probably a good idea. I'm sure I'd love if you invited him at some point, though. Honestly, I'd like to bring Dad and Fiona here when things settle down. I like Elliot. So as for the character notes, Sharon has several changed. She fought against Reed in order to train him to better stand for Ouroboros, which remains a part of Claire. Uh, just by talking to her, no bonding event, we get to his origins, and Toval gets the goddess of the game, thanks to a woman he met, when involved in some trouble regarding an artifact. Again, Toval, I don't believe he actually shows up in Trails in the Sky, but he is... He's an off-screen character, essentially. I believe is the case. I haven't played him in a little bit. Um, so I don't fully remember. As for the remaining people that we have left, uh, one thing you can do is if you go into the fast travel, you can see where all of your bonding events are. Uh, so anything that has a yellow exclamation part is a bonding event, that's where someone is, and then anyone who, or then of course, the red is your mission location, and if you have a side quest, then that will show up in green. Our choices between these for our last point are Gaius, Machias, Milliam, and Elisa. There is no difference as to who you choose for this one. Um, in terms of completion, you can choose any of them that you want. Uh, does not matter at all. However, I am a big fan of the Elisa and Irene ship, so I will be going through that one, but first I do want to talk about what the other four, or the other three, rather, have in store. The first one is Milliam's. Milliam's is one of the weirdest bonding events in the entire game, because you actually have some interactability with it. You play some snowboarding with her, you chase her down on Aragetlam as she races down the mountain, you cannot win. Uh, she is significantly faster than you. Um, Basically, she says that she wants to learn how to snowboard, and proceeds to not snowboard, and even when being asked about it, she doesn't know anything about Altina, and says that she wants to know more, but 
at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. They're enemies, so they're gonna fight. Pretty million things to do, honestly. Guys helps out with some snow shoveling. Uh, this is similar to what... I th actually, no. We didn't do this lesson. Uh, he... Is this... Yes, no, this is... I don't know. Okay, okay, I remember this one. Uh, basically, this one is... No, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, with toe balls. Never mind. Um, Guy says he helps, or just helps out snow shoveling, and of course, Guy is normally wearing a short-sleeved shirt. Uh, he won't be if you have him dressed up differently, so it makes a little bit less sense, but... Essentially, Rain is just kind of wondering how he's so cold-resistant, and Guy says he's still very proud of his homeland, but he does eventually want his family to go and visit Erebonia once the war is over. As for Machias, he still is playing chess, he challenges you to a game of chess, um, he was in the chess club back at Thor's, and he's really concerned about the whereabouts of different students, which is actually pretty touching coming from him. He's not really the guy known to care for too many people, uh, especially nobles, but he starts showing his sentiments that he is no longer at the point where he is a all nobles are bad guy, which was one of the big problems that I had with his character in Cold Steel 1. Of course, we don't, uh, this doesn't have a recap of Elisa's. Let's go over what Elisa's is about. She wants to do some cooking later, so I'm here to stock up on ingredients. He's asked for stuff that be nice and nutritious for your dad, too. Thank you so much for doing this. You must be exhausted after the time you spent in order, too, so try to get some rest if you can. Thanks, maybe I will. You know, the footpath I passed on the way here might be a great way to do that. I haven't used it since our trip, so maybe I could do with a little dip. Join us. Oh. It does sound good. Can I come with? The more the merrier. Let me just finish up my shopping, then we can head over. Again, I'm a fan of this ship. Um, it's fine. After Risa helped uh, Lisa carry her purchase back home, the two of them made their way over to the footpath. I can feel the warmth coursing through your body. It feels like all my exhaustion is just melting away. Yeah, the footpath's nice all year round, but it's really something special during winter. The last time we were here, it was still early fall, so I imagine you can feel the difference, too. I can, actually. I think it was winter when I came here with my family as a little girl, too. Oh, yeah, you mentioned last time we were here uh, that you have been with your family. Do you remember how long ago? When my father was still alive, so it was around nine years ago, I suppose. It was grandfather's idea to bring us all here. This was back before Sharon joined your family, too. That sounds exactly like something he'd suggest. If it was nine years ago, does that make it a few years or so after my dad adopted me? How funny would it be if we actually bumped into each other back when we were kids? I couldn't stay for long since everyone was really busy with work at the time, but I'll treasure the memory forever. The whole family laughing together and smiling, mother and father at my side. It's amazing how much can change in nine years. Everything is completely different now, both at home and in Erebonia as a whole. I'm so glad it's alright, wherever she is now. Keep looking at it. Man, for what? What's this? It's called a happiness hair. They're seen as kind of good luck charms around here. You can only put a little bit more effort into making one and use different materials, but this'll do for me. Well, it's a sweet little thing, isn't it? I you know, right? When we were kids, at least used to always make one for me whenever she thought I was down. Oh. Sorry, you must be as worried about her as I am about mother. Sure, she's just fine. That's what I'm choosing to believe. So just try and believe that your mom is fine too. I'm sure you'll be reunited with her before long. Just don't give up hope. Yeah, I won't. Come on, don't cry. Here, this will cheer you up. Don't worry. Is that? Is that a memory from when I came here as a little girl? Lisa? Uh, sorry, because it's a little childish to think something like this would cheer you up. No, that's not it at all. Thanks for the encouragement, Lee. I won't give up. I'll keep believing that we'll be both reunited with our families before long. That's what I like to hear. Sometimes you don't really need to get anything groundbreaking for one. It's... No, we did... I mean, we technically do learn a little bit more about Lisa and her past, but not really. It's just her talking about a time that she came here and just bonding over missing family, which is not a good thing to... But, well... Okay, it is a good thing to bond over, not a good thing to... You get what I mean. But, with us just crossing the 20 minute mark, which I always want to reach for, 
that will do it for this episode. Next episode, I believe we will be moving along to uh, at least the start. I don't know if we'll actually reach Legrand because I do want to still talk to everyone um, and talk to everyone again that I haven't talked to or that I've talked to for doing their bonding events. So Lisa Sharon and Tova will be talked to again. But that will be it for this time. So, yeah, next time we do just what I said we'd do. But until then, see you guys later.